You are listening to Lovely Talks Heavy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lovely Talks Heavy. I am your host, Lovely, and I discuss everything I enjoy with regard to heavy music. I hope your weekend is well, everyone. Today, I'm going to do something a bit different. Not too different, but different in this episode. In the past, I have done episodes about news and heavy metal, but I'm going to try and stray away from that format, mainly because when I get around to a piece of news that I think is interesting, it's not so topical anymore. If I have anything to say about a musician being a piece of shit or whatever, I'll put that on my Twitter, maybe. Something I will keep from those episodes, though, is album reviews, and my plan for this is to review albums that came out in the past month at the end of each month. I'm going to aim for different genres and one album from each week. If I bring back news at all, I'll probably be just talking about future album releases. Now that that's established, if you have a suggestion at all any time for an album for me to look at for these episodes, feel free to hit me up, lthfeedback at protonmail.com, and I will definitely put your suggestion into consideration. For this episode, I only have two albums, but know that the albums per episode ratio should increase for the future. Let's finally talk about these albums now. First, we're looking at Ritual by Oomph, which came out the 18th of January through Napalm Records. If you're not familiar with Oomph, they are a German industrial hmm, rock band. So your first thought when listening to this band might be, how well will they fit in the bill at Wave Got to Treffen? Or will this be blasting along with Black by Blue Tendal and Marian by Sisters of Mercy while Goths dance under your local bridge? I think Oomph would do a good job at a goth festival. I would love to see them, you know. But anyways, I must put a little disclaimer on my review of Ritual because Oomph's lyrics are completely in German and I just don't have a translator on retainer. Yes, I have a German friend who can translate stuff for me, who has helped me in the past, but, like, he has a life, okay? So basically, I'm saying I use Google Translate on these lyrics, so if there's anything I get wrong, please excuse me, but do feel free to correct me if you happen to know German way better than I do, which is to say any German at all. <clears throat> so, with Ritual, I believe Oomph were aiming to have a particular theme and make statements with each song that build up and contributes to that overall theme. That's what's going on lyrically and musically. I will say it does activate that goth inside me dancing under that bridge. <laughs> First, we have Thousand Mand und Dein Befehl, which translates to A Thousand Man and One Command, which is one of the leading singles off of this album. It is a very good and catchy song with the properties of a single, and oomph say of the song that it's about the tragedy of blindly following orders during warfare. Without a strict hierarchy, most wars certainly would not happen. It's well succinctly put in that song title, Thousand Men and One Command, Thousand Men und Ein Befehl. But we also have to consider within the song the cries of Nie wieder Krieg, which translates to Never Again War. Again, I used Google Translate for this. And we have, despite the condemnation of war in this song, warlike chants of Stellt euch quer, which means stand cross. And I know that the content of the song is not something we would typically associate with the carnal activities of the flesh, nor should we associate them with the carnal activities of the flesh. But if you were to gather anything about this band and its music from this one song alone, you could easily say that Oomph makes music that you can fuck to. Add that to your Valentine's Day playlist. Next up is Achtung Achtung, which instantly reminded me of when I did my hard work by Carcass track by track. In the song's embodiment and doctrinal expletives off of that album, I discussed the idea of religious figures manipulating the word of God so that people would worship them and give them money or just make them feel overall good on their high horse. And a similar kind of thing is happening with Achtung Achtung. It utilizes a couple of different points of view to tell a story of a priest or self-declared precog or something alerting us with the calls of Achtung, Achtung, Ende, Ende to the end of the world. 
Oh, but don't worry, I will show you the way. No, this is not a scam. Pay no mind to the fact that I'm asking you for money. <gasps> the chorus utilizes the point of view of the following of this person to show how well the fear was injected into them. They're begging, Father, take me in your arms, show me the way, bring me home. Father, please have some mercy, hear my prayer, lead me out of here. All of that, but like, in German. Aside from Carcass, the song also makes me think of that one guy who keeps trying to predict the end of the world using religious math or whatever, and said in one of his many failed attempts that in like 2010, 2011, I think, that there would be a worldwide earthquake starting in New Zealand and that everybody that's in for heaven would rise to heaven, and that we all should meet up in our Sunday best for when God takes us. What really got me, though, is that there were services like pet shelters telling these people that they would keep their pets safe during the apocalypse that never came, just... <laughs> I know as a people, as a species, we're supposed to be condemning these people that take advantage of people's religious panic, fear, what have you. But it's just so funny to me that people don't entirely think about the um, fact that, that they're just using their panic to be like, hey, we this is good business right here. Um, also, why wouldn't they think that their pets would go to heaven with them or something? Anyways. Next, we have one of the other singles so far off this album, Kein Liebeslied, and it's a fucking jam. It makes it clear that it's not a love song, it's not a nice song, it's a song about anger, hate, revenge, disgust, etc. And I think it's a very illustrative of people who are caught in an us-versus-them mentality and who only love to bask in negativity and anger because they get some attention or money on YouTube. Because the song says, this is not a love song, it's not a nice song, but you will love it anyways, and it's sure to be a staple for our future sets. I'm just going to quickly run through a few other songs that illustrate a certain frustration with the general state of things. Traumakinda, which is about children inheriting a shitty earth. Das Schweigen der Lämmer, which is sort of emotional and existential and doubting the existence of a god. Terrafik and Hitler, which is a spelling convention not unlike the Control-Alt-Delete command and... Uh, is about power and abuse within religion and politics and sexuality. Phonix aus der Asche, which I believe is about being burned at the stake. And Sinusela, which is about the story of a girl looking for the soul and a man she's been forced to marry. I'm not entirely sure about Europa, but they've been putting up explanation of the songs on this album on Napalm's YouTube channel, so we'll see. So the last two songs I want to talk about on this album are In Namen des Vaters and Las de Belta Frey. So In Namen des Vaters is a sci-fi sort of story, which I'm into. It's about this scientist who makes clones for warfare, which I think would have made for a good prequel to Thousand Men und Dein Befehl, but it's kind of unfortunate, actually, since Thousand Men is clearly more rooted in reality, where In Namen des Vaters is more fantasy, though one could make an argument based on the lyrics of the song that the could be interpreted as manipulation of thoughts and ideas, which I'm all for interpretation of art because that's what I'm trying to do for a living here, but that interpretation of In Namen des Vaters is not one that I would fully agree with, because again, the song feels more rooted in sci-fi fantasy than reality. It's a very good song, though. I really enjoy it. I will say that. Lastly, Last About the Fry. I was very excited when I learned that the song translates to Set the Booty Free because I am a child. But the song isn't about butts. What I mean by booty is money, so it makes for a Robin Hood or piratey kind of feeling. Though I wonder if they were to make a music video for this song, if they were to take the opportunity to use that double entendre play on words, who knows? I'm all for the message of the song, though. Rich people need to stop hoarding their goddamn money. Overall, Ritual is a pretty good album, though I think in order for it to be a strong album, it needs to be tighter. I get the overall theme of the world needs to be better and people in power need to be held accountable for that, but there's some songs on here that need to be taken out if we're going to stick with that theme. Particularly in Nomen des Vaters, even though I really like that song. 
I think the album name and cover also don't really fit with what they're trying to go for with this theme. Even though there are some pieces of this album I don't like or don't think that really fit, I still enjoy it mostly, and I think you would too. And now we have When the World Becomes Undone by a Pale Horse Named Death, which also came out the 18th of January, but through Long Branch Records. This is some fuzzy sounding doom. We're brought in with an intro track, which usually I'm an advocate for intro tracks, but this one really doesn't need to be there. Because the title track, When the World Becomes Undone, has a gentle piano intro, which could just as easily bring us into the album. I really like the startling bass and riffs that suddenly come into this song, saying basically, hey, we're going for a ride. Lyrics that I love, though, in the song are this constant repetition of, I've got this funny feeling that God is dead, I've got this funny feeling that he don't care. <laughs> Next, we have Doom in the style of Mother Feather with Love the Ones You Hate. It's easily the poppiest song on this album with a killer guitar solo at the end. I have no complaints about that, though. What's exciting is that it has a transition into the next track. Boy, I love a transition! We go from upbeat Nirvana to regular Alice in Chains with the next song, Fell in My Hole. It's depression incarnate, baby. This is what Doom is about. It repeats constantly the feeling that one will never crawl out of this hole, but hoping that maybe one will get out of this hole. Then we have Succumbing to the Event Horizon, which transitions again from that previous song. Ugh. Then we get into Vultures, which is a good song, but doesn't really stand out to me. But what's great about the tracks from Love the Ones You Hate to Vultures is that they feel like chronological parts of a story. It feels like an allegorical representation of depression to me, where Love the Ones You Hate feels like everything's fine, then you fall into a hole with fell into my hole, you succumb to the event horizon, and you're just sad. And Vultures feels like a deep valley where you're never gonna leave, and there's vultures circling above you. You might be in hell, you might be in purgatory, but it's gray and depressing. Then we move on to End of Days, which just drags on too much. Which I get that the point of Doom is to see how long we can take to get through one lyric or whatever, but like... It wasn't even the longest song on this album, and it felt like it took forever to get through. And I was relieved when it was over. Not only that, but it felt very awkward, like Man in a Box by Alice in Chains if it stumbled a lot. Like, the lyrical content's okay, talking about an eclipse signaling the end of days, reminding me of ancient Greek panic whenever the sun went dark and perhaps we angered the gods. And also the drums were really good on the song, but that's the only thing going for it. The Woods is a, quote, instrumental track, unquote, which I believe is supposed to have a storyline with the intro track and closing track, which I'll get to in a minute. I will say it just didn't do anything for me. We get to We All Break Down, which, ugh, I'm all for look at the state of the world, we need to do better kind of songs, but I think they only work well if they're discussing specific problems and what could be done about them. This just gives me a vibe of Disturbed's Land of Confusion cover, which I don't care for. Well, I like the cover that Disturbed did of Land of Confusion, but the vibe is just like, ugh. Even at an early age, when I was getting into metal, I could feel something off about the feeling of the kind of songs that bands try to do that say, let's make the world a better place. And I can finally put words to it now. It just feels disingenuous because you're using as broad language as possible so that you're not pissing anybody off. But isn't that really the point of these kind of songs? Um, and that's what the song We All Break Down is giving me. Not sorry about it. We transition into Lay With The Wicked, which has no real chorus. That's all I wrote in my notes for that one for some reason. Dreams of the End has a nice beginning with drones of Pray For Us, repeating over and over. We get more of the drums that I've been liking this album, but unfortunately it's another awkward song, which is unfortunate because it's the longest song. Then we get into Closure, which is the last song, and another quote instrumental unquote track, which these tracks, the intro, the woods, and Closure, they're not instrumental, they're more story, atmospheric. 
Closure in particular has a funeral bell ringing, the sobs of a widow question mark, and a dog barking and passing sirens, and then that's the end of the album. This is, I'm guessing, a continuation of the woods where a ritual sacrifice is happening, and Closure is supposed to be mourning the loss of the person who was sacrificed? This is just a guess, and my trying to pull together something, put together a narrative that I would really like in this album. But honestly, we can just get rid of the intro, the woods, and Closure. They really don't do anything to help this album, I don't think. Some things to ask of story atmospheric tracks like the ones on this album are, what does it add to the experience of this album and can it stand on its own? I will say that these tracks don't really add anything. They could probably stand on their own, but like this is not the place for it. This makes me think about an album that I really like called Scare Force 1 by Lord No, I have not forgiven them for their crimes either. But the intro track, SCG-7, Arm Your Doors and Cross Check, does an excellent job of bringing you into the album like a flight taking off. And the last song, Sir, Mr. President Death, Sir, has a story atmospheric outro where people on this flight are going to die. But if you're listening to this album on loop, you'll realize that the outro transitions nicely back into the intro, and it feels like writing on Scare Force 1 will never end. And that's what I mean when I say, what does it add to the experience of the album? But also, these tracks stand nicely on their own. So in conclusion, when the world becomes undone by a pale horse named Death is okay overall. I like the warped, affected vocals throughout this album. I really like the drums. I really like the song, Love the Ones You Hate. But there's some awkwardness in this album that makes it hard to get through, and we just need to get rid of the story, atmospheric, instrumental, non-lyrical tracks on this album. Before we wrap up, I wanted to talk about something spectacular. So last week, last weekend, one of my favorite people on YouTube, H Bomber Guy, did something ridiculous, honestly. He did a nonstop live stream for 57 hours for charity. There's this organization in the United Kingdom called Mermaids, which helps transgender children. And there's this thing in the UK called the National Lottery, which I'm not entirely sure how that works, but apparently, I suppose, allocates funding for different organizations. And Mermaids was supposed to get a half a million pounds in funding from the National Lottery, which was supposed to last them five years. But this angry comedy writer man who is extremely transphobic sent a hate mob to send emails to the people at the National Lottery to say, no, don't give them this funding. So that funding was pulled and is currently in review, and hopefully Mermaids should be getting that funding anyways. But in hopes of helping them out just a little bit, H Bomber Guy did this stream on Twitch where he played Donkey Kong 64 all the way through until he beat it. Took him 57 hours with overnight sleeps, thankfully. He was hoping to raise just $3,000 just to help them out a bit. Um... Motherfucker managed to raise over $300,000. Not only that, but this got the attention of the CEO of Mermaids, a U.S. congresswoman, Mara Wilson, who you might recognize from the film Matilda or from the podcast Welcome to Night Vale, the latter of which I'm more fond of, and acclaimed porn author Chuck Tingle. And there's some names I'm definitely leaving out there, but holy shit. This was a mega meaningful gesture to the transgender community. And as a gender fluid person, I fall under that category. Gender fluid and non-binary genders are under the category of transgender. And to see so many people donate to a cause to spite a transphobe and to support transgender people, it is unbelievable. It made me tear up. I want this kind of energy to keep going. Thank you, Harris. Um... <laughs> Something you can do to help transgender people is to get yourself a copy of Sacred Spells compilation through Psychic Eye Records. This is an electronic dark wave album which will benefit the TGI Justice Project, which will help trans prisoners. I will link this in the episode description. 
But if you enjoyed this episode of Lovely Tech Heavy, feel free to let me know on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, and Mixcloud. I am Lovely Metalhead. Follow me on those platforms and give me feedback. You can also send your feedback to lthfeedback at protonmail.com. Definitely let me know what you think of this album review format, and I will read your feedback aloud on the show. Support the show by sharing with a friend, and if you want to extend that support a bit further, I have a Ko-fi page, ko-fi.com slash lovelymetalhead. I also have a wonderful editor and friend named Tino on Twitter and Mixcloud. He is Tino Fella. Tell him hey, and thank you for his work. Thank him for his work. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, everybody, until next week. Next Saturday, the next episode of Lovely Talks Heavy on Mixcloud.com. You stay brutal, my friends. Goodbye! Goodbye!